Hi everybody, welcome back. Uh, our topic today is uh, preparing for your e-commerce transition. Um, our previous video was essentially on how do you know when it's time to, uh, to switch e-commerce platforms. So today, what we're assuming, if you haven't seen that video, go back and watch it. Um, but uh, today we're focusing on the next part of this, which is, okay, you've made the, you've made the decision, you're ready to switch e-commerce platforms. How do you prepare for that transition? So that's what we're gonna take a deeper dive on today. Uh, what I essentially want to focus on here is not, um, is not the developer's side of this project. Developers have all kinds of things that they need to do for them to be prepared for an e-commerce project, um, but that's the developer's job. That's, you're essentially hiring them so that they can do those things for you. And uh, you ought to be able to essentially assume your developer's competence that they can uh, develop a platform that's going to meet your needs. Um, if, if you can't, you shouldn't be working with them. So let's assume for a moment that they're going to develop a solid platform for you. This is about then how do you manage the process of transitioning because you're essentially packing up and moving an entire online business and resetting up shop somewhere else. And the biggest part of that has to do with moving your product catalog. Um, so this is everything that goes into that tool that you've had built. And a big part of the, an e-commerce development project is you know, managing that process. So it's not just developing the tool, it's also about deploying your, your business into, into that tool. But um, this is a collaborative process essentially between you and the developer to make sure that you guys are on the same page about how your business works, how your product catalog is organized, so that with that clear communication, your project can actually go as smoothly as possible when you are you know, deploying on this great new tool that you've chosen. So, the first thing is look at your product catalog, and um, this may be one of the pain points. This 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 is may well be why you're switching is that you wanted to you know add products, add vendors, restructure how your stuff is set up. So you may well be familiar with your product catalog and what changes you're looking for in that. But really take a minute to sit down and you know diagram out not on literal paper but you know on paper um, what. Um, what the structure of your products is, what fields are associated with all of those products and product options. Make sure you understand everything that makes up that structure. And if it's going to change when you switch sites, make sure you understand what it's changing to. Um, if you like what it is, maybe that this communication is simple and it's just it should stay exactly the same um, as what you have, but you need to be able to communicate exactly what it is that you have, what that structure is, so that it can be replicated. Um, so understand essentially your product catalog, be able to communicate what changes you would want to make to that in terms of how products are structured, how associated products are, are organized or product options. Um, you know, when you're grouping a lot of SKUs together, it's important that you have the right ones grouped under the same product. But then also within the category structure that groups those larger products, how people search and navigate your store, um, you know, is that how you want it or does that need to be restructured and, you know, or re, um, relinked in a different way? So, um, once you understand that, the next thing is, okay, how do you get that out of your existing e-commerce system? You're switching platforms, which means you need to take all of that product out of one platform and put it into another platform. How do you get it out? Um, there are a few different ways. Um, the simplest is just that you have uh, an export option in the you know, software of your existing e-commerce platform and you go in there and you click export and it dumps everything out, all the fields, all the images. Um, when we talk about images and dumping those images out as part of an e-commerce export, we don't mean a bunch of image files, we mean the URLs for all of the images that are associated with the products. It's important that you have that field in the spreadsheet that you export because otherwise you're going to import a bunch of products and no images. Um, so make sure that the image URLs are part of any export that you're taking. Make sure you get your images you know, moved over along with everything else. Um, that's how they're going to get onto your new site. So, um, so having an export function is great. Um, other options that are out there, if they've got an API that a developer can tap into and work with, um, that's a great way to access the site information. But it, it may also be that either with the developer that you were with previously or the platform that you chose, these options may just not be visible. And in that case, you really need to get in touch with uh, essentially your, your customer service rep with your existing platform, let them know what you need and figure out a plan with them for how you're going to get that information 
um, from that platform and hopefully you have somebody who is going to be cooperative and work with you because at the end of the day there isn't any reason why they can't dump that database out for you just bear in mind that at the point where you're going to a person and saying I need you to give me this um, you need to communicate clearly they need to be cooperative um, you're bringing a whole human element there into um, getting a handle on your product data so Assuming that process goes smoothly, you get an export of all your products, it includes everything that you have. The next thing is importing products. And importing products, um, it, we're just essentially talking about taking that export and pulling it into your new site. The uh, benefit that we have to work with here is that uh, you get to choose what your new platform is. That's the whole point of the project is that you've chosen something and just make sure that what you've chosen includes an import option that's going to work for for your products and again the reason we take a look at your product catalog and make sure we've diagrammed out how we want all of that stuff arranged is that you want to make sure before you've committed to a platform that it's going to support the structure and organization of products that you want when you import everything and make that switch so doing your homework back here is going to save you a lot of work you know up at the up at the import phase of things where you're where you're pulling things in uh, finally then adding new product this is often one of the reasons people are switching e-commerce uh, platforms in the first place is they want um, to expand their product offering so just understand that if a part of your transition is also adding new product lines new vendors to your site that when you got this export from your existing site it's all one cohesive thing because you had it already up on a live site. When you go to bring in a third party source of product, um, they could give you a spreadsheet to import, you know, here's, here's 10,000 new SKUs to add to your site, but um, they're not going to be structured the same way that your existing products are structured most likely. And that means that you're going to need some assistance essentially reorganizing again that structure to match how you want your product catalog organized so that when you import it, it's essentially been reformatted to fit the way your site works and is structured. So think about that when you're thinking about adding new products and bear in mind when you mapped out all of those fields that when you ask your new vendor for, okay, I want to get all these new products on my site and they send you that, that export, check those columns and make sure that all of the fields that you need are there and that if they're not there that you have a way to to add them hopefully if it's if it's something as simple as a yes no and the answer is oh for, for all this vendors we just need to add a yes column that's great if it's oh we need images for all these products and that image url column is missing from this spreadsheet your products aren't going to have any images so Think about that when you're when you're um, planning on adding new product to your site and really get all of this together um, before you begin the process of migrating because once you begin that migration now you've got to do it all on the fly because you're you're you know you're essentially trying to do it you know midstream and that's that's not the best way usually to have a stress fee project so something to think about uh, another side point I wanted to make I'm um, going back to exporting products um, products are not the only thing you're going to need to export from your site um, you also need to think about your users um, and their information and um, all of your order information so uh, if you want to move all those users over you also need to be able to export those things out and import them um, usually users passwords or payment information are not stored in the clear I mean God I hope they're not stored in the clear so um, what that's going to mean is that you're going to you're going to export a certain amount of information and re-import it but that from there you're going to need to reach out to your users and let them know that hey we've switched platforms and the next time you log in you'll need to update your password and here's a helpful link to do that but if you do this right you can really frame this as a positive thing and it should be a positive thing and it's a marketing opportunity because it gives you something to talk about with your customers to let them know that you're improving that you're adding your product you know uh, expanding your product catalog that there's going to be new great things for them to check out so really it can be an invaluable marketing opportunity if you do it right and a PR design if you do it wrong so let's do it right um, that's that's pretty much it for this week um, next time we're going to touch on uh, red flags warning signals to uh, look for in an e-commerce project when you to, when you see things kind of going off the rails and how to head those off so that's gonna um, be our topic to kind of wrap up this mini series on um, understanding when preparing for and managing uh, the transition of your e-commerce site all right Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next time.